I reckon you guys have got a pretty solid idea about dehydration. I want to get sort of get to the end of this tutorial relatively quickly because I'm going to give you a bit of kind of advice, really, I suppose. Um, first things first, though, I just want to define things for you. We're talking about the loss of fluids leading to a loss of cellular, fu cellular, func cellular function. And that's important because, obviously, if we're losing cellular function, that means that we are obviously not performing, exercising, health at its peak that it could be. And really what I want to do is just give you some sort of conditions of general dehydration. So before we get into specific formats of dehydration, I'm going to talk about general dehydration. And this is what we might expect to happen. Well, first of all, we would get a, a decrease in blood. So let, let's imagine you've been exercising and I don't know, you've been running in hot conditions and um, you've been sweating quite a bit, half an hour, something like that, your blood plasma levels may well decrease. This has the knock-on impact that because of that, your blood viscosity, the thickness, stickiness, your blood viscosity is going to go up. As a result of this little principle, what's going to happen is you are going to have a decrease in your stroke volume. So during exercise, despite your exercise intensity is not going up, but despite that, you are going to have an up arrow, a, an increase in exercising HR, heart rate, despite, despite no change in intensity. Okay, so but even though you are not, let's say, running faster, you are not running up a hill, even though you are not doing any kind of sprinting, your heart rate is increasing despite that continuous nature, that steady state nature of the exercise. Well, the problem with that is that that is going to mean that you are going to reach obla, remember, onset of blood lactate accumulation. You're going to reach obla, there's an L in there, early and can i stress this is not a temporal measure not early in the sense of you know how soon it's going to happen you're going to you're going to reach obla your lactate inflection point where you go into the majority of work anaerobically you're going to reach that at a lower intensity of exercise and let me make that clear at a lower intensity so what's going to happen is even though you're still working at a relatively low intensity you're going to go into your anaerobic systems predominantly despite that and that's because this blood is not being pushed around as efficiently as it was before. Now, there's a couple of things that this will cause. First of all, it will cause, obviously, that's going to cause obla, but we're also going to get a decrease in concentration. You know, your actual capacity to concentrate is going to drop. Does this explain why certain sports performers make mistakes at the end of their uh, performances? We can describe these as errors. You know, we might make technical errors, even though this is more of kind of a biological considera consideration. And the other one is that people experience irritability. Okay, irritability. Now, that is our general perspective of what we mean by dehydration. But what we are going to do is we're going to take this further. And I'm going to describe to you, and this is where I'm going to get to the advice at the end. I'm going to describe to you the differences between hypernotice, natremia, hypernatremia, and the difference between that and hypo notice natremia okay so these may be new terms for you and i'm going to take you through them so hypernatremia to begin with we refer to this as hypertonic hypertonic dehydration now you may well not be clear on what that means just yet don't worry i'm going to explain it to you what we mean by hypertonic dehydration is that we have a loss of water no surprise there we're talking about dehydration however this happens without notice not without a proportional proportional loss of sodium so you may be aware that when we sweat for example we do pass electrolytes through the skin and they and they do leave the body in that way but what we're saying here is high, if hypernatremia occurs this is happening because water is being lost but sodium is remaining in the body and what this leads to and this is where we get into sort of the problem so i'll go into red this leads to that's meant to be red this leads to excess excess sodium and it really would be sodium as well just put excess sodium in the blood okay excess sodium in the blood that is a problem why first of all it's going to lead to thirst now that's not necessarily a problem of course because you know we can address that but what is a problem is that this can cause deep confusion 
okay so high levels of sodium in the blood in obviously as a proportion it causes psychological issues it also causes muscle twitches okay so again these both of these things can be related to perhaps poor technique or bad decisions and finally in extreme cases it can lead to seizures so i just want to be clear hypernatremia is when we are dehydrated with water only and we have still got um our electrolyte levels being higher or proportionally higher and therefore that leads to the issues just described now you probably already guess what hyponatremia is if i sort of go into here well here we are talking about hypo hypotonic dehydration that's the term we would use to describe this it's sort of overarching description hypotonic dehydration and this time we are getting a loss of sodium a loss of sodium um by losing both water and electrolyte electrolytes electrolytes so we are getting the loss of both now what the, what will happen here what will happen here is that we're going to have certain long term issues the first one we're going to have let me go into negatives again here we may not feel thirsty so this condition hyponatremia is not as detectable just by the sensation of okay i need a drink but furthermore it's related to sluggishness it's related sluggishness it's related to confusion it's related to twitches and seizures so very similar to what we had before twitches seizures so we've got two different conditions here and of course what's going to happen um uh, of course if you think about this what's going to happen here is that if you take on water okay if you take on water only water you're still going to have hyponatremia because you're still going to have that lack of ele electrolyte so that means we need to do something different and that's where my advice comes into you okay this is where sports drinks are worth your consideration now this is whether you're playing sport doing exercise going for a long walk whatever so what we're going to sort of think about here is that um if you are high if you are hyper if you are hypernatremic hypernatremic you know if you've got um uh effectively if you've got um no loss of electrolytes there the answer to this is water okay water will address this however if you are hyponatremic hyponatremic of course this is where you've got low fluid and electrolyte levels water is not going to address that this is where we need a hyper tonic drink now hyper contains additional amounts of electrolytes hypertonic drink and those can help replace now the other thing we want to be thinking about is not just what happens when we get into the situation but how do we prevent how do we prevent these conditions and one of the ways of course drinking in general but one of the ways is that isotonic drinks those being of um electrolyte levels that are equal to the body isotonic drinks for ongoing for ongoing performance so you should be building let's call it a rehydration strategy into longer you should be building a, a rehydration strategy into longer events and part of that should be the ongoing utilization of isotonic drinks and of course if you experience hyponatremia that's where your hypotonic drinks come in if you experience a hypernatremia that's where water itself would be the beneficial product cheers